Good evening, everyone. I thought I'd do a special uh, evening video for you to kind of set the stage for what we expect to happen late tonight into tomorrow. A lot of you will be uh, you know, turning off the computer for the day here over the next couple of hours. And before you, you hit the sack tonight, I wanted to uh, tell you what the latest trends are, what uh, how, how things may kind of unfold as we head into Wednesday. Everything's quiet right now. Northeast Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, it'll stay that way for the rest of the evening. And well into the night tonight, so we're starting to become more concerned about the, the early morning hours on Wednesday, probably pretty close to daybreak. Show you more on the timing in just a second. Here's the area we're watching right now. Severe thunderstorm watch in yellow here from Chicago on west into Iowa. And where you have all these kind of red boxes here with little stars, those are large hail reports. There's been a lot of hail out here with these storms across uh, the Midwest this evening. I'm going to take those off, make this a little less busy. Several severe thunderstorm warnings out for individual uh, parts of counties here in Iowa and into Illinois right now, mostly because of hail, but also because of some wind. So that's the area we're keeping an eye on. It is the area of most concern for the rest of the evening, and then the threat is going to start to shift east as we head through the overnight tonight. Here's a look at the uh, enhanced risk area uh, as drawn by the Storm Prediction Center out in Norman, Oklahoma. In yellow, that's where we have the enhanced risk through 8 a.m. tomorrow. Notice that Youngstown is not in the enhanced risk. We're more just in the general thunderstorm area here. I could see where this uh, needs to be adjusted some overnight. I guess I wouldn't be shocked if they, they went ahead and extended this area a little bit more like this. We'll have to see how that plays out. But that's the outlook for the overnight tonight. This uh, band of thunderstorms will transition out of the Chicago area into Michigan and then start cascading south and east to show you the future radar here momentarily. That's the risk through 8 a.m. tomorrow. I'm going to take off that and bring up Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So basically during the day on Wednesday, when I mentioned everything's going to start shifting south and east. The area highlighted in yellow here, that's where the enhanced risk is for the 12-hour period, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesday. Notice again that uh, actually Youngstown is not in <laughs> the enhanced risk, although it's awfully close. So for all intents and purposes, uh, Youngstown is included in the areas we're going to be keeping a close eye on uh, during the course of Wednesday. Uh, my suspicion is that if we get severe weather on Wednesday, the better chance may actually be first thing in the morning as opposed to the afternoon. I can't rule out in the afternoon some heavy gusty storms, um, but I, I suspect the greatest risk in the afternoon tomorrow, the highest percentage chance of seeing some big storms is going to be kind of down in, down in here. The chance up here is not zero by any stretch, but it's just higher down here tomorrow afternoon. So again, we'll break down that uh, in just a second. So that's the kind of the general outline in terms of uh, the risk for tomorrow. Now we can bring up the uh, the percent chances of severe weather. The uh, Storm Prediction Center does these probabilities. And this kind of goes along with what I was just saying, that in the afternoon, especially tomorrow, the better chance of a, a another surge of severe weather is going to be south of Youngstown. Notice the red area here. That's 30% chance of some type of severe weather occurring within 25 miles of any one spot. So included in that is Cincinnati, Parkersburg, Marietta, heading over towards Morgantown, uh, well, maybe not quite to Morgantown, West Virginia, but pretty close to Charleston, and maybe up to Columbus as well. All right, so that's the Storm Prediction Center outlooks for the day tomorrow. Let me bring you back uh, over here. We're going to take off the current information, and I'm going to bring up the uh, latest high-resolution computer models. Uh, these are computer models, and therefore they are far from perfect. But they do give us a good guide, something to hang our hat on a little bit, something to guide us through the next several hours. First off, the high-resolution rapid refresh model here. I'm going to back this up to one hour from when I'm recording this, so during the 9 o'clock hour. And, you know, this doesn't look quite right to me. And, you know, it doesn't have as pronounced activity as that is actually occurring in Iowa and Illinois. So this leads me to believe that this latest run of the uh, high-resolution rapid refresh may be a little flawed. Here, hot off the presses, though, here's the very latest run. This just came in. This is doing a little bit better representing what's going on out there around the Chicago area and points west. So let's roll this forward and see what it does here. I'll fast forward a few hours. Here's midnight tonight. At this point, a couple of different clusters of storms in Michigan and, again, back towards Chicago and into uh, northern Indiana. That's midnight. Here's 2 in the morning. The uh, cluster of storms may be starting to, to bend a little bit south and east. It's got some stuff blowing up here over Lake Erie at 2 o'clock in the morning with more activity to the west. 
And then let's roll forward to 4 a.m. And this is when the uh, latest hot off the presses run of the rapid refresh has one cluster of storms coming into northeast Ohio and northwestern Pennsylvania. And maybe that's kind of a precursor to this kind of a more uh, significant or more well-organized band out in parts of Michigan. Again, this is at 4 o'clock in the morning. Now let's roll forward to 6 a.m. And this is when that uh, second batch is uh, predicted to be crossing Lake Erie, heading into Cleveland at 6 a.m. And uh, the last hour that's available on this is at 7 a.m. Some pretty beefy thunderstorms, maybe from Youngstown on north. Now, again, this is just one computer model, one run of one computer model, and a lot of times the models don't handle these mesoscale convective systems, MCS as they're called. They don't handle them all that well. The high-resolution models can do decently, but we have to take everything we're seeing here with a little bit of a grain of salt because the models are easily fooled by these things. I'm going to bring up the latest uh, high-resolution NAM model for the same time period tomorrow morning. This is at 7 a.m., and it has this uh, cluster at 7 a.m. a little farther west, crossing Lake Erie at 7 a.m. Roll this forward. Oops. Roll this forward and see what it does then. Here's 8 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. Again, this band of storms bending southeast through the valley early to mid-morning. Fast forward to noontime, and at this point, uh, not a tremendous amount of heavy activity around. But then things may try to reload in the afternoon. Again, this is noon. Here's 1 p.m., 2 p.m., and it just I think it kind of depends on how much rain we get first thing in the morning. What, if any, sunshine we manage to see tomorrow? That'll go a long way towards determining how quickly the atmosphere can reload and launch more thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. My suspicion is we get stabilized pretty decently tomorrow morning, and therefore the, the threat is not real high in the afternoon for a couple of severe storms. A couple of thunderstorms, maybe? Yes. Severe storms? I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, on the fence about that. I think the better chance, again, is going to be south of us because there'll be probably a little more sun. The atmosphere won't be as unstable, or I'm sorry, not, not as stable from the uh, early morning activity. So here at uh, 4 in the afternoon, notice things are getting active down towards I-70. 5 and so let's go to 6 o'clock here. And uh, some uh, big boomers, I suspect, are showing up here on the model once it loads. Yeah, pretty much I-70 on south towards the Ohio River. And while there could be some activity up here, it doesn't, to me, look like it would be quite as severe. All right, so bottom line I want you to take away from this video. Things may get a little loud across the valley early Wednesday. This may be even after sunrise, but within an hour or two on either side of sunrise, there could be some thunderstorms. Even though that complex will probably be weakening somewhat as it comes out of Chicago, out of Michigan, and bends southeast, even though there probably will be some weakening, uh, we have to be on guard for some surprises here. Uh, possibly some strong storms with gusty winds, and I guess I wouldn't be shocked if any of those stronger storms continue to produce some hail. And then we have the possibility of round two of big th thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon, but there's a lot of uncertainty with that as to how unstable the atmosphere might be uh, tomorrow afternoon probably the better chance tomorrow afternoon of organized severe weather will be south of Youngstown. All right, I'll keep you updated through the rest of the evening on social media, of course, as I see new developments. Jess has you covered tomorrow morning if things get real bad and uh, we need to uh, do some big-time coverage. I'll, I'll get out of bed and come in. Uh, so uh, we've got you covered here. Stay with us, and uh, we'll see you uh, once again in this uh, same spot tomorrow morning.